So again, I, I do welcome you all to our, our service and hope that you find joy and, and peace and quiet um, in this time after all the hecticness of this season. And um, just a reminder too, that there will be doing this via Zoom all this month. So uh, we'll work out all the kinks all over again. So to prepare then to find the holy in this space and to find the holy within ourselves, let's sit back and listen as Chris plays the prelude. Now let's join together in our responsive call to worship. We gather to once again receive the announcement of Jesus' birth. To ponder the wonder of Jesus as Mary did when she held her child. To glorify God as the shepherds did when they saw love lying in a manger. To remember that Jesus' love was an out-of-the-box kind of love. On that first Christmas, the prophets knew Jesus would grow to love without limits. Caring for strangers and friends alike. His love was so profound that even from the very first day, the angels couldn't keep from singing. We have been singing along with them ever since. Glory, alleluia, Christ is born. Hearing this good news, let's join together in our opening hymn. It's number 36, and we'll sing verses 1 and 2. Angels from the realms of glory, bring your flight o'er all the earth. He who sang creation story, Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Is now residing. Yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ in the newborn King. And so let us worship as we join together in our opening prayer. Let us pray as one. On this day of days, loving God, we gather to celebrate the wondrous gift of Jesus the Christ. Born long ago and still today, child of the universe present among us. May we in the things we do and say continue to give birth to the presence of the living Christ in our world today and always. Amen. And we continue on in prayer as we sing our prayer of illumination for this season. We hear the Christmas angels. We 
first reading for today comes from the book of Proverbs, which includes wise sayings about what matters most in life. You could think about it like an elder in your family whispering to you the secrets that they've learned, the important things they've learned in their life that they want to pass on to you. In this short excerpt from the third chapter, verses 21 to 28, the writer speaks of wisdom and prudence and doing good when we have the power to do it. Listen to the spirit speak to you through these wide, wise words. My child, do not let these escape from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and prudence and they will be life for your soul and adornment for your neck. Then you will walk on your way securely and your foot will not stumble. And if you sit down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden panic or of the storm that strikes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from those who, whom it is due and when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, well, go away and come again tomorrow and I will give it when you have it with you. And so ends our first reading. Our responsive Psalm, which is Psalm 148, is uh, all about praise. It's not just about how humanity praises God. It's about how God is praised through the very cosmos. In the first verses, we'll hear about how angels and stars and lights of the heaven will praise God. And then the psalm focuses on how the earth, including the mountains, the trees and animals glorify God. And finally, it concludes with us, God's people, from the highest heavens to earthly creatures, when God is present, creation sings, glory to God in, on high, and if that sounds familiar, you would be right, because that's what the angels sang. Glory to God in the highest heaven when Jesus was born. And just like the heavens proclaimed God in Psalm 148, in Matthew's account of Jesus' birth, a star leads seekers to the stable. The idea is that when God is present, every element of the cosmos offers praise. Praise God from the heavens, give praise in the heights, give praise all you angels, praise God all you hosts. Praise God, sun and moon, give praise stars and lights. Praise God, farthest heavens and all waters beyond heaven. Let the whole creation cry, glory be to God on high. Let all things praise the Holy One at whose command they were created, who established them for all time, setting bounds which cannot be passed. Praise God from the earth, great sea creatures and ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and frost, gales that obey God's decree. All mountains and hills, all fruit trees and cedars, wild animals and cattle, creatures winged and earthbound. Sovereigns who rule earth and its people, all who govern and judge this world, young men and women alike, 
old people, and children together. Let the whole creation cry, glory be to God on high. Let all things praise the name of God, the name above every other, whose splendor covers heaven and earth. You give strength to your people, songs of praise to your faithful, to Israel, the people dear to your heart. Let the whole creation cry, glory be to God on high. Now turning to our gospel, we hear again from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. And this is a Christmas story through Luke's eyes. And I know that you've heard it before, but I invite you to try and listen to it as if you've heard it never. Listen as if it were fresh. You might even want to close your eyes and visualize the scene. Note the variety of ways characters in the story respond to the good news. Put yourself in their shoes. What would your response be? May God bless you with insight as we listen to the reading of our sacred scriptures. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, well, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And so they went with haste and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to her church. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Our reflections today, they come from a resource from the United Church of Canada and um, are quite a poignant reflection for us, I think, on this Boxing Day. So they ask us to consider what is it that we do on a typical Boxing Day? I mean, what is it that you like to do? Do you fall into a turkey coma? Do you hit the malls to get the best deals of the day? Do you tidy up after the aftermath of company and presence? And quite personally, I'm looking forward to um, just crashing for the rest of the day and putting my feet up and slowly when I want to get up and move a little bit, picking up and cleaning up all the chaos that has occurred in my house and putting things back to normal. But after the shepherds visited the Holy Family and shared what the angels had told them about Jesus, namely that he was going to bring good news of great joy, the scriptures say Mary treasured their words and pondered them in her heart. In other words, she grew quiet and reflective. Now, the shepherds, on the other hand, went off on their way 
glorifying and praising God. Treasure, ponder, glorify, praise. All are appropriate responses to receiving profound good news. Now in Matthew's gospel, the Magi arrive on the scene offering gifts. Their response to hearing the good news of Jesus' birth is to offer a gift that symbolizes who Jesus was and what he would become. Boxing Day is a good day for treasuring the Christmas story and pondering the call to places on us. It's a good day to glorify and praise. It's a great day to contemplate generosity as we'll hear in our reflections. Now let's ponder as we sing together in the bleak midwinter. Now for Boxing Day, apparently it came out, it came to be associated with turkey sandwiches, football and discount shopping. It was known as a day to serve those in need originally. And there are various theories about how that came to be. One of the theories suggests that it came from the practice of giving Christmas boxes to servants along with a day off following Christmas. And another theory suggests that the tradition of Boxing Day came from a custom in the late Roman early Christian era where alms boxes were placed in churches and were given to those who were living in poverty on the feast of Saint Stephen. He was a Christian martyr known for charitable acts. And incidentally, the feast of Saint Stephen falls on the second day of Christmas tide, and in some churches today would be the feast of Saint Stephen that we'd be, we would be celebrating. But regardless of whatever the historical thread you follow, Boxing Day was always meant to be a day of contemplation and generosity. This morning, I would invite you to align yourselves with the roots of this day, a day that calls us to compassion. So let's sing Infant Holy. Infant holy, infant lowly, for his bed a cattle stall. Oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the babe is Lord of home. Swift are swinging, angels singing, Noel's ringing, tidings bringing, Christ the babe is born for home. Christ the babe is born for home. Christ, the greatest gift of all, was indeed born for all. He made that clear in the life that he lived, and he fulfilled what the angels promised, that he would bring good news of great joy to all people. And you notice that scripture doesn't say to some people. It doesn't say to the people who are like us or live next door to us or believe like us. It says all people. Just because someone lives next to us or 
believes like us doesn't mean that they should be cared for more than anyone else or anyone who lives in another city or another country. God calls us to love our neighbor as ourselves. When Jesus was asked who our neighbor is, he essentially said, everyone. Our mission and service strives to accomplish three things, to help transform and save lives, to inspire meaning and purpose, and to build a better world. As Christ's followers, we aren't only interested in how our neighbors who are living down the street are doing, we are called to care for the whole human family, including those living across Canada and across and around the world. As the United Church, we share our resources so we can have a bigger impact on any than any one church could have alone. As we sing our next hymn, after we sing our next hymn, we will share a story of how our mission and service fund has helped others, particularly a gentleman named David, and how our giving is not constricted or constrained to artificial boundaries or geography or even judgment. But first, let's sing together, O Little Town of Bethlehem. child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Now, if it's anyone who needs to hear great glad tidings. It's people like David who experienced Christmas as one of the loneliest times of the year. David says, 10 years ago, my wife and I were living our dream. We were running a successful catering business in Vancouver. But that was before a drunk driver took my wife's life. And that was just the beginning. The heartbreak was still fresh for me when six weeks later, a work accident claimed the life of my 23-year-old son. And in the blink of an eye, he was gone. A few months later, I got a call that my daughter's car had veered from the road. And by the time she was found, she had frozen to death. In five months, David's entire family was gone and he turned to substances to numb his pain. My rock bottom came, he said, when I was arrested for carrying drugs and in jail, I had a lot of time to think about the man I wanted to become. I knew I needed to make some huge changes if I wanted to be happy again and become the man my beloved wife and kids knew me to be. And Bissell Center, supported through your mission and service gifts, was the first place David went to when he was released. The staff greeted me with kindness, he said. Instead of judging me, they welcomed me and handed me a warm plate of food. The staff told me about their mental health and housing support programs, and I was blown away. For the first time, I realized that I didn't have to rebuild my life alone, he said. It's your generosity and mine through our submission and service that helps people like David start over. In their most painful hour, it is one of the ways you and I tell them that they make, that they matter to us and that they matter to God. And it is there any better gift than to let someone know that they are valued and loved just as they are. So still, 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 let's sing together. is 
calm and still. The Christ child in his crib lies sleeping. Angels round him watch our keeping. Still, still, still. The night is calm and still. Joy, 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 glad tidings of great joy. For through God's holy incarnation, Christ is born for our salvation. Joy, 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 glad tidings of great joy. So at the beginning of this series of reflections, I asked you what you typically do on Boxing Day. You know, do you fall into a turkey coma or hit the sails or tidy up after the aftermath of company and presence? Now, if you give to the mission and service, whether that's Wesley Ministries as well, or even if you give to our CAT program, I want you to know that you are doing much more than any of these. Right now, your generosity is restoring dignity, putting food on a table and a roof over someone's head. It's letting someone know that they're not alone and providing education, agricultural training, job training, and life-saving advocacy. For some, your generosity means a second chance to life. Through your gifts, you are bringing great joy. So treasure that thought today. Treasure knowing that you are making a difference. And on this day that has somehow morphed into becoming all about getting a great deal or you know, the best bargain of the day, you are giving the best gift of all. You are giving the gift of compassion. So may God bless you with wisdom to appreciate all that we have and all that we have to give. So like Mary, the shepherds, the Magi, and Jesus himself, let's go into the new year treasuring, pondering, glorifying, and praising, and giving. Let's take love out of any boxes we put her in and share it. May it be so. Amen. So just to take a, a moment to look at um, the life and work of our, our church and a reminder that uh, Susan, as Susan has up there, there are our outreach program, our community around the table will be handing out a meal, I believe it's pasta this week for those in need. And um, also a reminder that um, we will, as we've said before, and as David has posted in a, our link to, to Zoom today, we will be for all of the month of January, worshiping via Zoom again, in order to hopefully keep everybody safe and help create a circuit breaker for the COVID Omicron variety. Now, Doug, is there any other announcements or anybody have any other announcements we need to make? If you do just unmute yourself. In the thought of generosity that we've been talking about, if anyone can make a special donation towards our painting and redecorating, it would be so appreciated. Um, that's what's on my mind right now. Thank you. Thank you again for that reminder, Jane. As we want to make sure that um, charity is also offered at home. Any other announcements? Next week we'll be we'll be celebrating Epiphany Sunday, so we get to continue on in the season of light. But this Sunday we celebrate 
specifically the gift that's been given, the gift of love unleashed in the world, the gift of the infant child who invites us to be part of pondering, treasuring, glorifying, praising, and ultimately also giving, because the gift of Christmas isn't just about our salvation, but our caring for all of the vulnerable in our midst and praising God. So take a moment now to just think of the gifts that you have to share and the offering that you would symbolically be putting into the collection plate at this time and just treasure and ponder and share. We sing of your glory. Oh, glory in the highest. Glory in the highest on earth, sing again. Glory, alleluia, amen, amen. Glory in the highest, on earth sing again. Glory, alleluia, amen, amen. Let us pray. Glory to you, O God, glory to you for all the ways this offering supports the work of your church. Glory to you for all the ways these gifts extend care to our neighbor. Glory to you for all the ways our support transforms and saves lives through the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church. Glory to you, O God. Amen. We continue on in prayer as we join together in our prayers of concern and thanksgiving. Our sung response for this season is, may we but wait upon love's word. May we but wait upon love's word, knowing our prayer is heard. What would we like to lift up in terms of thanksgivings this week? Jane? I'm very thankful for you, Reverend Jane. Uh, two services so close together, all so full of absolutely wonderful information and inspiring. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Flora. I was thankful for the uh, Queen's annual speech at Christmas time, where she gave us all encouragement and saying, we'll get through this. And this was nice to hear. Yes. Thank you for that reminder. Shirley. I got to visit with a lot of my family at different homes yesterday and got to hold my newest great grandchild, which was quite nice. Awesome. <clears throat> thankful Definitely for that. Definitely something to be thankful for, yes. Any other Thanksgivings? Mary Jo? Uh, and I apologize for being late. It was dog related, but in a good way, not a bad way. Um, <laughs> I would like to give thanks for the life of and the contribution of Bishop Desmond Tutu, who passed away, mm -hmm. I guess I guess it was yesterday. He was quite a pioneer in civil rights and social justice, age 90. Yes, thank you for that reminder. He really was a, a profound spiritual leader too. I mean, the wisdom, just um, reading some of his stuff is, it's really inspirational. 
So we're thankful for Desmond Tutu's contribution and his life. Any other Thanksgivings? Carol? Um, I, I think I mentioned before, but we got up to our daughter Jeanette's and, and our son-in-law Jeff's yesterday and uh, the farm is just beautiful on, on, on Christmas as it is always. But um, we were able to see that our grandson who was supposedly in seclusion, but he um, everybody tested negative and, um, uh, and we, we just had a, a great time. Got back safely too and, uh, and here we are. Thank you. So I think in this season, we can all be thankful for the gift of, of Christmas and the gift of family and friends that, who remind us that it, it's relationships. You know, it's not process, it's not buildings, it's not um, <clears throat> laws and rules, it's relationships. It's people that matter, not things. And they, I think the gift of Christmas sneaks in and, and shows us that the holy is everywhere amongst everything and often appears in our lives in unexpected places and invites us to keep our eyes open for seeing the holy in the most extraordinary places. So let's take a moment to rest and see and experience the thanksgiving of this season in a moment of personal quiet prayer of thanks with the divine. May we but wait upon love's word. May we but wait upon love's word, knowing our prayer is heard. As we wait and ponder the holy in our midst, what would we like to lift, lift up in terms of prayers of concern this week? Susan? Um, the, uh, the COVID numbers just keep rising to ridiculous numbers, like over 10,000 in the province of Ontario alone. I think we need to pray for, for all of us, the whole world, that, that somehow we can break this, like, like you said, like a circuit breaker and stop the COVID. So. Yes. Any other prayers for today? Yeah, I think about those um, who are alone on the holidays for whom Christmas is one of the toughest times of the year. I think about those who are dealing with sick loved ones or are dealing with sicknesses themselves. And particularly, we remember Al's daughter, Alicia, and we remember Heather and my friends, Gail and Mark. And I think we could pray for those for whom family is often a little more of a challenge than a blessing. In some cases, family has scarred and hurt us and that left us damaged in ways we we don't like and it's exemplified a whole lot more at this time of year when the world is picturing the picture of of that perfect christmas and that perfect family and then the reality of our own or in some cases very different and often abusive families makes this a, a really hard time Let me think of um, our church and the struggles of our church and all churches to be the hands and face and heart of, of Jesus in the world to bring love and light in a time where we cannot gather together in a time where it's, you know, there's not enough people and not enough money. And yet the heart and will of so many to do and be the face of God is awesome. 
So let's take the prayers that you've shared and I've shared and hold them in a moment of quiet prayer with the divine. <clears throat> May we but wait upon love's word. May we but wait upon love's word, knowing our prayer is heard. Knowing that our prayer is heard and that ours, even in infant Christ, is a God who hears and listens to our prayers and offers us hope peace, joy, and love. In the midst of these gifts and the confidence of that love, let's join together in singing the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever the closing hymn for the this morning is angels we have heard on high and we'll sing verses one and two Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their glorious strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Shepherds by this jubilee, by your joyous strains prolong, what the gladsome tidings be, which inspire your heavenly song. Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Now, nothing boxed in Jesus' love, not rules, not borders, not petty disagreements. We, too, are called to let love break loose in and through our lives. As we leave, may God bless us to live with a caring and daring love, one that not only knows it is better to give than to receive, but also that it's in giving that we do receive. 
God, who is our creator, and Jesus Christ, our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer, bless us in living and giving generously today and in all the days to come. And the people said, Amen. May it be so. Mm -hmm. Our glad hosannas, prince of peace, your welcome shall proclaim, and heaven's eternal arches ring with your beloved name. On behalf of the Rev. Jane Wiley and our congregation, we thank you for joining with us today for our service of the spoken and sung word. The historic congregation of First Pilgrim United Church hopes that you enjoyed the service and that it personally spoke to you. We look forward to having you join with us again. Due to the rising COVID infection numbers in Ontario, our services are currently being held on Zoom and are later posted on our YouTube channel. Our church is located in downtown Hamilton, Ontario, at 200 Main Street East. Please follow us on Facebook and visit our website at www.firstpilgrimuc.ca. Thank you, and God bless.